Hallelujah, Father. Come on, let's lift those hands in the air. God, we thank you. We're here to connect with you this morning. We welcome you, Father. We thank you for these great songs of praise, Lord God, that get us all into one place at one time. And we thank you for the songs that were chosen and songs that were sung. Because it's been a fight for some of us, Lord God. It's been a struggle. But Lord God, you're going to remove all those things right now, Lord God. And we're going to stretch our faith and turn our hearts towards you. We thank you, Father God, for giving us this part of you that connects us to you every single time we go. And it's called the Holy Spirit.
It is in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is God to the glory of God our Father. In the name of Jesus, everything that we need is in the name of Jesus. Healing is in the name of Jesus. Deliverance in the name of Jesus. Every supply, Father God, that is in need, Father God, you have it. It's all in the name of Jesus. And things happen when we call on the name of Jesus. When we call that name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Demons have to flee in the name of Jesus. Children have to get in line in the name of Jesus. Husband and wives come together in the name of Jesus. Healing takes place in the name of Jesus. Deliverance takes place in the name of Jesus. Financial needs are met in the name of Jesus. Bills are paid in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Everything we need is in the name of Jesus. Those that are in hospitals, nursing homes, at home, the name of Jesus is there with them. The spirit of the living God is in them. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Those that are serving in the military at home and abroad, the spirit of the living God in the name of Jesus is with them. In the name of Jesus. Our Women of Exodus Conference is there with them in proximity. In the name of Jesus, we'll bring them here this morning. And in the name of Jesus, everything will overflow in the name of Jesus. And even right now, God is here in the name of Jesus. Reach out, reach out, hallelujah. Reach out and touch in the name of Jesus. Bless Father God, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. The man of God that will bring forth your word in the name of Jesus. Use him for your glory in the name of Jesus. His family overseer. Everyone that is in here, every family, bless open every door, meet supply every need, make every way. In the name of Jesus we pray and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory, glory, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our morning scripture is coming to us from the book of John, the gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. It is on the screen. And Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. Hallelujah. He cuts away every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. We don't want to be cut away, do we? My God. But he trims clean every branch that does produce fruit so that it will produce even more fruit to the glory of God. You are already clean because of what I have said to you. Glory to God. Stay joined to me and I will stay joined to you. Just as a branch cannot produce fruit unless it stay joined to the vine. We must stay joined to Jesus Christ. You cannot produce fruit unless you stay joined to me. It is the word. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you stay joined to me and I stay joined to you, then you will produce lots of fruit. Lots of fruit. Amen. But you cannot do anything without me. We cannot do nothing at all without Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Give God a praise. Come on, glorify him. Everything comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are there any first-time visitors here this morning? Is this your first time? If Please stand. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We welcome you here, and we welcome those, our online visitors, and we welcome our Haiti family, our greatest Shallow North family. We welcome all of you in the name of Jesus. Someone is going to come and hand you something. We ask that you would fill out the card and give it back to them or drop it in the offering basket. And now it's time to greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ. We haven't seen each other for seven days. Come on. Okay, the clock is starting. Come on, greet, greet, greet. Hallelujah. Hey, online fam, and welcome back. If you're tuning in for the first time, welcome home. And if you're tuning in with us again, we're glad to have you back. 
We're currently doing our community connect here, where we take the time to engage with one another. So we want to make sure that we're doing that online. So make sure you engage with your fellow viewers, leave comments, let us know how you felt about the service. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Next coming up, we have The Pulse. Good morning, Greater Shallow Church, and welcome back home. If you're joining us online for the first time, welcome. Make sure you say hello. One of the ministers will be in touch with you throughout the service. If you're joining us here in the sanctuary for the first time, welcome home, family. Please fill out one of our connections cards, drop it into the offering baskets, as one of our ministers would love to stay in touch with you. These are, are your morning, morning announcements. announcements. Join us this Wednesday for The Gathering, which is our monthly time of praise, worship, and the Word. You want to be in the building. Don't miss out on this amazing time. Get together, fellowship, and have just an awesome time in God's presence. No matter what campus you're on, whether it's the Haiti campus, online, Stroudsburg, or the main campus, there's something here for everyone. Let's take a look. Join us as we celebrate the 50th birthday of co-pastor-elect Christina Davis on May 19th at the Centennial Conference Center, Homewood Suites, located in Center Valley. Hors d'oeuvres begin at 5 p.m. Tickets are only $60 per person. This is a formal event. Purchase your ticket today after service in the foyer. It's going to be fun and amazing. Don't miss it. The Haiti Missions will be accepting donations of toothpaste and toothbrushes, bar soap, deodorant, and powder in the foyer after service. Please make sure your items can fit in a one-gallon Ziploc bag for shipping. Or you can also purchase hygiene bags at the dollar store for $6 to donate. Additionally, we are accepting prepayments for the Haiti t-shirt fundraiser. T-shirt prices start at $15 in advance. Please wear your t-shirt to service on June 17th to support. For more information, contact Deacon Bethuel Philanthrop. GSC, join the diaconate ministry for the 2018 scholarship golf outing on June 9th at the Glenbrook Golf Club in Stroudsburg, PA. Tea time begins at 8 a.m. and the cost is only $100. Proceeds from this event will benefit our high school students. This event is open to all. Sign up to play or sponsor a player. Space is limited, so reserve your spot today. Stop by the table in the foyer for more information. Summer is coming. It's camp time. Greater Shiloh S-T-E-A-M summer camps registration has begun. Parents, if you are looking for a fun educational place for your kids this summer, sign them up for the Shiloh S-T-E-A-M summer camp. It's a brand new program with lots of great activities. The camp will run from June 18th through August 17th. Register today in the foyer. Calling all moms. 
Join the 228 Kids for a beautiful you, Queens and Princesses Tea Affair. Sunday, the 6th of May from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. at the Shiloh and Richmond Center. Fun hats, gloves, and fancy dresses are encouraged. Cost is $6 per person or $12 per pair. Space is limited, so sign up today in the foyer. Hey GSE family, the Prayer Warriors Ministry invite you to join them for a prayer walk on the 28th of April between 9 and 2 p.m. Don't miss this amazing time. In addition, mark your calendars and come out for the National Day of Prayer on May 3rd, 2018. Prayer will take place at the North Campus and the Main Campus from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Intercede with us as we pray for America. For more information, contact the church office. If you're on social media, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And if you're on Facebook, like us and also check in right now. Share the service with your friends. Tell them to come and enjoy this worship experience with us. And remember, friends, every day is a good time to give, love, and serve. Let's get back to service. Well, amen. amen. Good morning, family. Can we stand to our feet as we get ready to give today? And we know this is an amazing opportunity time in our service where we're able to worship the Lord in our giving. I want to share with you a quick scripture um, found in, in the Gospel of Mark. Um, it says, he sat down at the opposite of the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large amounts, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all of those who are contributing in the offering box. For they contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in what she had and what she had to live on. In, in the gospel, we see that there was this woman who put in um, she was not as rich as many of the folks who were around. And Jesus honored her for her giving, not because of what she put in, not because of the amount or, or any of that, but he honored that woman because of her faithfulness. So I want to encourage everyone today, whether you give out of abundance, whether you give out of right where you are, no matter amounts, denomination, we're doing kingdom work and we're giving toward the kingdom. Lives are being changed and God honors our faithfulness in our giving, in our loving, and in our serving. So I'm going to ask the team to come, and then we'll pray together, and then we'll, we'll worship the Lord in giving this morning. Amen. All right. I'm going to raise my phone, but can we just raise our offerings toward the heaven? Lord, we thank you this morning because you are our provider. We thank you because... You have given us provision. You've given us jobs. You've given us means, Lord. You have done it all, and we're grateful. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you in giving, for this truly is an act of worship. I thank you for each person who will give today. I thank you for those who are not able to give. We know that the offerings and tithes will be used for the building and uplifting of your kingdom. Lives will be changed. Ministry will be done. Your hands and feet are in action. So we thank you, Jesus, and we look forward to giving now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please follow the direction of the temple servants. Service has been awesome, and I hope that you've enjoyed it so far. You know what time it is. It's time to give. You can give via the PushPay app, or you can use the Give tab on Church Online. The word's going to be coming up next, so make sure you stay tuned.
Y'all stay right there. Will you look at somebody and tell them late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. I don't know about you, but I've got testimonies that God has turned it around. Come on, when people had left, when my hope had left, sometimes when my faith had left, God still turned it, it around it, for me. It. Is there anybody here today Come on, that the doctors may have given oh, up on you, but God thank never did. You, Lord, thank you, I, I want to give God praise, and I, I just have to do this. I want to give God praise for the Martinez family who are back in this church today. Mother Peggy has gone through so many different challenges, 
Um, and Pastor Martinez just got himself a brand new kidney. Can you give God praise for that? We were sitting in my office this morning and I said to him, I said, man, if you didn't tell me you got a brand new kidney, I wouldn't know. The glory and the glow of God is on his life this morning. And so when I think about late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. And, and he's, at some point, he's going to come and tell his testimony how God did that thing in a moment's notice. How many of you know you could be right in the midst of the storm, but in a moment's notice, God can step in, as Elder Hattie said today, and say, peace be still. And what was going crazy in your life, God can come. And is there anybody here knows that God is in charge of the storm? My God, I can look around the room and see so many different faces where the doctors have given you negative reports, but God has prevailed in every situation. I want to read to you a passage of scripture. They're going to sing a bit of a song, but I'm going to read to you from John 15. And I'm going to read to you verses 7 through 9. And it says this. Don't worry about it, Oliver. I got it. Uh, Stay joined to me and let my teachings be a part of you. Listen to this. Then you can pray for whatever you want. John 15, 7. Uh, then you can pray for whatever you want and your prayer will be answered. When you become fruitful disciples of mine, uh huh, my Father will be honored. Verse 9 says, I have loved you just as my Father has loved me. So remain faithful to my love for you. We're still on the power of connection. Stay connected to the vine. The ministry is perfect in all of you. Perfect in all of your way. Perfect in all of your way to us. You are perfect in all of your way. Perfect in all of your way. You are perfect in all of your way.
testimony today that you know our God is a good, good father. He's not the kind of father who leaves or departs. He's not the kind of father who's an absent father. He's a kind of father who covers us, provides for us and protects us and loves us many a times in spite of our mistakes and in spite of our shortcomings and in spite of our falling and our failing. Our God is a loving father. Come on, if that's in your heart, just say thank you, Lord for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me. Thank you, Lord, for protecting me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise today. We ask that you would open our heart to be able to receive the word of God today. That you would open our mind to be able to perceive the word of God. And you would make our heart like good soil as the seed is planted, Lord. It will go into good ground and produce fruit, Lord. That fruit that will remain. That transformative power that can change our lives. We honor you today, Lord, because we want to stay connected to the vine. Because your promise to us is, Lord, that we can ask anything we want when we're connected. That you will answer our prayer. So now, Lord, be with us in these next moments. Prepare us to receive the word of God. Hide me behind the cross. Lord, you increase as I decrease. That your name may get the glory, the honor, and the praise. And for these things, we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name. Somebody put those hands together and give God a great praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So for those of you who are here for the first time, we've been um, talking about the power of connection. Um, staying connected to the vine for the last three or four weeks. And um, the more I read, the more God gives me understanding. M more recently, it, it, while I'm asleep, I've been playing the audio Bible. Um, and, and I don't know if um, I have given you proper context um, around this, this conversation that Jesus is having uh, with the disciples at the time. And by, but when we get to John the 15th chapter, uh, we need to know that Jesus is in Jerusalem and he is on his way to the cross. And so he is operating in what I'll call, not me, but someone called the urgency of now. He realizes how important it is that he communicates this message to them before he dies. Literally, he was a few days from being arrested in John 15. We're not 100% sure which day it was on, but, but literally he was a few days before. In, in John chapter 11, he raises Lazarus from the dead. Uh, and then he leaves after um, raising Lazarus from the dead, and then he's on his way towards Jerusalem after he raises Lazarus. He knows that by raising Lazarus from the dead, it's going to be the thing that, that hurries up or accelerates him going to the cross because the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, would be upset. They say literally the whole world is going after Jesus now that he's raised Lazarus from the dead. John chapter 12, he begins to have more dialogue, right? Um, and he, he goes uh, into the city. John chapter 13, uh, he's sitting down and breaking bread with his disciples, right? He takes off his uh, outer garment, wraps himself, washes his, their feet, and says, you know, I've washed your feet. Now you should do the same for one another. He, he has the, the, some called the Last Supper, in John 13. John 14 is uh, that, that, that passage of Scripture we know. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. But we're not so, I would not have said it. And, and, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also. And, and so John 14, God again is now preparing them. In John 14, he begins to talk about um, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit, right? And so we see now there is this progression that is happening with Jesus, and he's getting closer and closer to the cross. So in John 15, by the time he gets to John 15, he's telling them, listen, you've got to stay connected to the vine. 
That, 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 that my, my, my father is the gardener and, and, and I am the vine and you got to stay connected to me. He knows in, a, in, in, in not many days hence he's going to be nailed to the cross. He's warned them. He said, some of y'all going to leave me. <laughs> some of y'all going to deny me. Some of you going to walk away from me. But I'm going to the cross and I want you to be ready for when I go to the cross. So when it happens, you're not thrown off. It's strange because I was listening to the text over and over again. I realized something. I realized that the disciples were kind of dense. <laughs> Jesus would say, I'm going, I'm going to die. And then they say, well, what are you talking about? You know, and, and literally, Judas was sitting at the table with them at the Last Supper, right? And, and he says, one of you are going to betray me. Uh, and, and, and they're all, well, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Jesus says, the one who I give this bread to is going to be the one that betrays me. He gives the bread to Judas. Judas gets up from the table, walks away, and they're still wondering, who is it that's going to betray Jesus? Jesus just said that the one he gave the bread to is going to betray him, <laughs> right? And it's amazing. You know, when I was a baby Christian, when I would read that, I would read it and then say, oh, okay, yeah, I get that. But, but as you grow up and as you mature, right, you look at the Scripture through a different perspective. I was like, man, those, those disciples, man, they were a little dense rolling with Jesus. And, 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 and as I began to understand that, I understand why it seems like his message was repetitive. He was saying the same thing, and he was just saying it from different perspectives because he wanted them to get it. Because he knew that he was going to die, and it was going to throw them into a tithy. And it was going to throw them off. And so, and so John 15. So we've been talking, we've been talking over the last a couple of weeks about staying connected to the vine. And we talked about um, being, you know, producing fruit in your life. Being a fruit producer and allowing the fruit of God to be uh, produced. I like, I like the fact that he says that if you stay connect, connected to me, you're not just going to produce a little fruit. You're going to produce more fruit. That it's not just going to be grapes, right? You're, you're going to have some apples and some sweet mangoes and some pineapples and some banana. You will have a fruit-filled life if you stay connected to Jesus. And this is the picture that we should look like as we grow and mature in Christ. It shouldn't just be a grape. <laughs> but we should have a whole vine of grapes growing off of our life. If somebody walks by us, they ought to be able to pick off some love. Come on. They ought to be able to pick off some peace, some joy, some gentleness, some patience. I'll get to that in a minute. But, but so I talk to you um, about, about multiple stages of our spiritual development. Because I think it's important that we realize the stages. So I'm just going to walk through them real quick uh, for those of you. I'm going to give us a quick review on that. And so I said that uh, the first stage, right, is being born again. It's called salvation. Somebody say salvation. That's when God rescues me from um, the penalty of sin, the penalty of death, the penalty that goes along with not, not knowing him. I'm born again. Watch this. I'm saved. I'm delivered. I'm protected. And then I am translated out of the kingdom of the devil. Watch this. Into the kingdom of God. Are y'all here with me today? That was all a couple of weeks ago. Uh, in, the, in the life of a grape, that's called budding. You don't see any grapes, but you just see bumps on the vine. Right? You just see the process beginning to start. And as a baby Christian, that's what happens, right? There's not a lot of fruit, but there is something happening, come on, that people can recognize that something's going on in your life. Can you go to stage two? Stage two, right, is when they're flowering, but I call it from salvation to impartation. And in impartation stage, watch this, you grow and you begin to grow and you begin to now realize that you have a, a new life. You begin to look at your world differently. You begin to look through a different set of eyes. You begin to get, what's this, a new vision for your life. A vision that comes from God. And in your impartation stage, watch this, you're realizing, you're realizing that there's something different about you. Do you remember growing from one stage to another? Like this, I don't fit in the world? Come on. I'm, I, I'm not who I used to be. God has changed and transformed me, and I'm growing up in the things of God, right? And in that, God gives you a new perspective, right? In that stage, you get peace. Because in the first stage of your faith, come on, you've had to go through some trials. How many of you remember when you first got saved? Some of the trouble seemed like, man, as soon as I got saved, the devil just opened up a can on me. You understand what I'm saying? And, and I'm like, what is going on? And God, listen, and God protected me and showed himself strong to me and delivered me. And while I was going through all of that, watch this, God showed himself strong. So by the time I get into phase two, I can look back and see what God has done. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? I can look back and see how my life has improved. Proved. Why? Because I'm walking with Jesus and I'm staying connected to the vine. Uh-huh. Uh, can you go to stage three? This is all review from the last couple of weeks, right? Um, the, ne the next thing you see on the vine is the fruit set, right? It's not really, you don't see fruit yet, but it, it's almost fruit. That like fruit is getting ready to grow and that's called the sanctification stage. 
That's when God begins to work on you internally. Come on, and he begins to clean you up. To be sanctified just means to be set apart. Right? And, and so you are, you are pruned for God's glory. Because in the text in John 15, he says, those who are connected to me, when they're producing fruit, I cut away some stuff. <laughs> Got to cut away some people. <laughs> Got to cut away some relationships. Got to cut away some things, right? God begins to prune you, but in the pruning process, he says, I'm only cutting you back so you can produce what? More fruit. Right? And so in th stage three, well, I'm sanctified and I'm set apart, but God is beginning to work some stuff in me that I can't work in myself. Uh, let's go to stage four. Stage four is a maturation stage, right? So, so from salvation, uh, we, we move and then we go uh, in, into this uh, maturation stage where we are producing fruit. Somebody say producing fruit with consistency. It's when we are, watch this, living a fruit-filled life and we are maturing, watch this, and we are doing stuff like adding to our faith virtue. Y'all know what virtue is, right? It's moral excellence. It's that uh, the, the Scripture tells us that we've got to, with diligence, add to our faith. And to our faith, we've got to add, we, we got to be in, 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 intentional about adding virtue. That means living right and being intentional, right? When you're maturing, when you're maturing, right, and you're producing fruit, there's certain things that you have to do to cause yourself to grow. I think I took you over to 2 Peter um, uh, uh, chapter 1, but I'm not going to go there. Um, but, but it just says that we have to add to our faith. Virtue and virtue, we have to add knowledge, and with knowledge, we have to have uh, a, a self control. This is all there it is uh, self control, perseverance um, to godliness. We got we to gotta add these things to our faith because the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1 if we don't add these things, we're blind. If, if we don't add these things as children of God, we're blind that, that we're not going to function and fulfill and be a fruitful. So it literally says we're unfruitful if we're not adding these things to our faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so, so stage five, and this is where I'm going to focus at for the next 20 minutes, um, um, uh, uh, the, the stage five is transformation. Say it with me. How many of you want to live a transformed life? Transformation is so critically important, but I got to give you, I got to give you, I got to give you uh, some things you have to watch out for. Um, as, you are, as you are walking through your spiritual process. Number one, you got to watch out for stagnation. Somebody say stagnation. Between salvation to transformation, you got to watch out for becoming stagnant. It is very easy to be a child of God and become stagnant in your faith. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Right? And you just feel like you're not moving, like you're not accomplishing anything, like you're not fulfilling God's will. And you can become stagnant in your walk with God. And I'm stopping by to tell you, you got to watch out for that devil of stagnation. Uh-huh. And then the next thing you need to watch out for is that spirit of frustration. Come on, that, that we, we now get into a place in our Christian world. And let me say this, stagnation and frustration can happen at any one of the levels that you're, that you're in. It, that, that it, it can happen in your salvation stage. It can happen in your impartation stage. It can happen in your sanctification stage. It can happen in your maturation stage. No matter where you are, if you're not careful, you can become stagnant in your faith. No matter where you are, you become frustrated in your faith. And what happens is when these things get into your life, you stop producing fruit. There's no fruit in your life. And, and, so, and so I want to encourage you, watch this. Um, here's, how you, here's how you can know if you've become stagnant or frustrated. Uh -huh. Stagnation, frustration, oh yeah, and C, procrastination. <laughs> because stagnation leads to frustration. And frustration leads to procrastination. Woo! Man, I blessed myself when I was writing this yesterday. <laughs> I've been thinking on it all week, right? And, and it, because if you're not careful, when you become stagnant, then you become frustrated. And when you become frustrated, then you're like, I'm just not going to do anything. If you feel like you're not growing, uh, Maslow, Maslow calls it um, the hierarchy of needs, right? If, if, if you are not, it's psychological, if you are not self-actualizing, if you haven't reached the highest level of your best self, what happens is you'll become frustrated after a while. You'll become stagnant after a while, and you'll feel like, woe is me. Nothing is going right in my life, just nothing happening. What the problem is, come on, you're stagnant. Here, here's how you know uh, that you are stagnant. Watch this. If you become uh, too comfortable, if you become lazy, if you become lethargic, and if you become, watch this, judgmental. 
I, I know that, I know that as a child of God who's connected to the vine, if, if these things are in me, watch this, I might be stagnant. I might have stagnation. I might have frustration. I might have procrastination. In other words, Judas was stagnant. <laughs> Judas was hanging out with Jesus. He was one of the 12. He was in, you know, Judas was there. But even while Judas was walking with Jesus, come on, do you know it was Judas that sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver? He had gotten stagnant in his faith. I mean, he was walking with Jesus. He's seen him, you know, do all of these miracles, and yet he was stagnant in his faith. I don't know about you, but um, I couldn't have been like Judas. Well, I guess maybe I could if I was stagnant. He was sitting in church. Matter of fact, he was walking with the church. <laughs> He was dining with the church. He was, I'm talking about Jesus. And, and, and still, come on, the woman breaks into the room and begins to worship Jesus and wash his feet with her hair and bless her. And Judas says, why has this woman had the opportunity to worship? We could have sold this stuff and made some money off of it. What? Frustrated. Complaining. Right? The, 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 the idea that many of us are growing and we have gone through different stages, but we get to a place where we're stagnant in our faith. We feel like we're not growing. We get frustrated. Watch this. And that leads to procrastination. How do I know, watch this, I'm stagnant? How do I know I'm stagnant? Uh, uh, other, other than, other than uh, what I've talked to you about, watch this. Uh, here's how you know you're stagnant. If you lack fruit. <laughs> If you uh, go over to Galatians chapter 5, uh, 22 and 23, if you lack fruit, you know you're stagnant. If you lack fruit, you know you're stagnant. Well, what is that? But the fruit of the Spirit, somebody say the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, uh, meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. As a child of God, we ought to be producing fruit, and I know that I'm stagnant if there's no fruit hanging off of me. <laughs> I know that I'm stagnant, and watch this. It's not what, sometimes it's not what you do with other folks, men. It's what you do in your household. Are you loving your wife? Uh-oh, wives. <laughs> Are you loving your husbands? Are you patient with them? Are you gentle with them? Are you kind with them, right? Because many a times the ones we love the most are the ones that we treat the worst. If you're lacking fruit, watch this. If you're lacking fruit, you may be stagnant. If you're lacking fruit, you may be in a place, right? Do you know that this in our life, God says, if you're connected to me, love is going to exude from you. If you're connected to me, joy is going to be a part of your journey. If you're connected to the vine, watch this, peace. You can't help but have peace. If you're connected to the vine, you can't help but have joy. And so I'm encouraging somebody today to check yourself. This is the litmus test on whether you're connected to the vine. I, I dare you to do this. Uh, if you're married, uh -huh. I, I, I dare you to ask your spouse. <laughs> oh, it's quiet in here. <laughs> because, because they know. They watch you every day. So they know if you got some patience. They know if you got some joy. They know if you got some gentleness and some kindness, right? Why, why don't you ask them, what kind of fruit am I producing in this house? If your spouse is not here, you're not really required to do it because, you know, I ain't trying to start no trouble. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Watch this. I lack fruitfulness. Watch this. I lack fruitfulness. Uh, I know I'm stagnant if I'm lacking fruitfulness. Watch this. Personal fruitfulness. But then if I lack fruitfulness in the kingdom of God. Right? Here's the reality. God set up the local church so that the local church could be the hands and feet of Jesus. And that God now established it, and he calls us the body of Christ, Romans chapter 12, and we'll get there in a minute if I have time. And then, watch this, he causes us to, watch this, work in the church and work out of the church. That there is work that needs to be done in the church. You see all those folks up there on the board? All those folks, you can't see them. They're up in the crow's nest. There's people on the camera. There's people back here singing. Brother Will is over there on the uh, uh, headphones. Somebody was in the parking lot. Somebody was greeting you coming in the door. Your children are going to get Sunday school. There's people at the homeless shelter. There's people serving in the nursing home. People get sick. Somebody drives them to the hospital on a regular basis. That is the work in the church. If you're lacking internal fruit in the church, maybe you become stagnant. Because we all have something to do in the house. There's something that we all should be doing in the house of God as a part of the family or the local assembly that God has connected us to. 
The question is, are you producing fruit in your church? But then, watch this, watch this, because if not, you may have become stagnant. Or, or you may have become frustrated. Or you may be procrastinating. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right? Um, and, and I would add a fourth one there. It just came to me. You may just be distracted. That's not in my notes. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, but, but you may, uh, you, you can add that to the, you may just be distracted. So it may be stagnation, frustration, procrastination, or distraction. Because if we're not careful, we'll allow distraction to get in our way, and that distraction will take us off the path, watch this, that God has for us. So we're talking about still staying connected to the vine. Uh-huh. Watch this. Not only do I, should I have work in the church, not only should I be doing the kingdom work in the church, but I should be working in the world. Somebody say it with me. Marketplace ministry. Uh, um, um, Pastor Martinez was sharing with me before service um, his experience in the hospital. And he was sharing with me how even in the hospital, come on, he was sharing his witness and his testimony. Come on, somebody. E even, even laying on the hospital bed, he had an opportunity to tell the goodness of Jesus. I remember some folks were working at Air Products. At lunchtime, they were holding a Bible study in Air Products, a multi-billion, maybe multi-million dollar corporation, but they chose to separate themselves and have Bible study during lunch. Watch this. Whether you're in a college setting or whether you're in a corporate setting or whether you're working in a, a supermarket, wherever you go, come on, every member is a minister, and we should be uh, having a marketplace ministry that says not only do I do work in my local assembly not only am I producing food in my church but when I go to work come on I'm a fruit producing Christian because God needs come on some secret agents out there who can listen pray for some folk who are going through encourage some folk whose heads are hung down in other words you are the light of the world and God has sent us into the world to be watch this a light in dark places and if that is true, when we go to the nursing home, Brother uh, Deacon Elijah has been ministering there for years. When we go to the nursing homes, what are we doing? We're bringing the light. It's a marketplace ministry. When we go to the homeless shelter, right, and when we go to the prisons, what is that? A marketplace ministry. When I go to my job and sit in my cubicle, come on, I've got to let the light of God shine outside of me. And if I go to the corner office because God has blessed me to move to the highest level of corporate success, you still got to go in there and say to God be all the glory for the great things he has done. I am a kingdom representative in my executive vice president role. So not only am I producing internal fruit in my church, watch this, but I'm also producing fruit on my mail route. I'm also producing fruit in my school. I'm also producing fruit on the basketball court. Wherever I go, I am a fruit producing Christian. Are you hearing me today? Watch out for the spirit of stagnation, frustration, procrastination, and distraction. Because each of those spirits then attach to them something that will detract from your faith. Are y'all still here with me today? Okay, so, transformation. That, 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 that I, I want to get us to transformation because we all want to live a transformed life. Romans chapter 12, verse 3, 2 and 3, be not conform to the world. Verse 2, but be transformed. So when I say transform, by what? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that what? Good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Check this out. God says if you want to know the will of God, let your mind be renewed. If you want to prove the will of God, let your mind be renewed. If you want to walk in the will of God, let your mind be renewed. How crazy. I love the fact that God is simple about this. Look at what he says in 15 verse 7, John 15, 7. He says, uh, uh, stay joined to me and let my teachings become a part of you. Then you can pray for what, whatever you. Say that again. <laughs> now I know some folks, well, I want to be a millionaire. God's like, I can't trust you to tithe on 20,000. How am I give you a million dollars? You'd probably leave the church and wouldn't come back. Right? You've got to be faithful over little things, and you've got to prove and test what God has said, and then God can move you up. But when you're connected to the vine, you ain't praying for a million dollars. You're praying, Lord, let me be faithful with what you've given me. Oh, 
God. You see, what happens for us is that we think that pray for anything means I can get whatever I want. No, you got to be connected to the vine. And when I'm connected to the vine, the life-giving power of the Spirit is running through me. So I'm not paying for, I'm not praying for a new car or a big house. I'm praying, Lord, change my heart. Lord, teach me to live right. It's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. And when transformation and change comes, uh, then you'll start to pray right. Then, then you'll start to ask God for those things that will remain. Are you here today? Uh-huh. I, I, it's, it's funny because I went through the Scripture and I realized that I can't find a, God, a time when God changed somebody's mind. I know you Bible folks are like, yes, but he changed Pharaoh's heart. You know why? Because we have free will. And God wants us to change our own mind. He doesn't say, let me transform your mind. He says, be what? Transformed. By the renewing of your mind. He said, I'm not going to renew your mind. You got to renew your mind. He said, I'll take care of your heart. I'll take care of what's on the, the very seat and soul and spirit of you. Watch this, but you got to change your own mind. You know, repentance is nothing but a changed mind. He says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind because it's imperative that if we're going to live a transformed life, we have to think differently. If we don't think differently, listen, we are what we think. And so it's imperative that we get to that place of transformed living. Somebody say, transform living with me. I want to be transformed. Uh, go over to John chapter 12. You may not have this, Oliver. The Lord just dropped it in my spirit. John chapter 12, verse 24 and 25. Here's how, here's how we get, thank you. Here's how we get to, here's how we get to a transformed mind. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and do what? It abideth alone. It bringeth for it, but if it die, it does what? Can I help you with a transformed mind, transformed life? You got to be willing to die to yourself. You got to be willing to die to your desire and let the will of God be birthed in you. You got to be willing to say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. Because I tell you what, when you get to that place and when you're connected to the vine, you realize that God's plan for you is much better than your plan for you. It's about me taming my will and saying, Will, you're not going to drive me, but I'm living and dying for God. He is my everything, my all in all. And when I die to myself, listen, when myself dies, when my desires die and I allow God's desires to be birthed in me, he said, I'm going to produce what? Much fruit. That, that there's going to be fruit that comes from me dying to myself. And the reality is, is that we all have to get to that place where we're ready and we're willing and we're able to die to self. I, I, I want to I encourage you, uh, if we were to look at John 15 again, as, as I, I'll be closing soon, but I want to encourage you to think about this. Think about this. Think about your life. Think about the fact that you're saved, you're born again, you've gone through stage one, you have salvation, you may be in stage two where God is imparting some new wisdom to you, you may be in stage three where you're being sanctified, you may be in stage four where you're maturing, watch this, and you may be moving towards stage five, which is transformation, which means that everything I do... God is on my mind. Everything I say, God is on my mind. How many of you, how many of you have, have, are, are saved, watch this, and you went to do something and there was something in you that wouldn't let you do it? Come on, just be honest, be honest, be honest. Uh-huh. Right? And you yielded, you yielded to the Spirit of God in you as opposed to your fleshly desire. Come on, that just means that God is in you and he's working on you. And watch this, and you are being sanctified and God is getting glory out of your life. Somebody say, stay connected to the vine. I want to encourage you to stay connected to the vine because the promise of God is you will become a fruitful disciple of Jesus. You will become one who walks in love, joy, peace, gentleness, patience, kindness. Watch this. And you will do what the Bible calls good works. Y'all still awake in here? You will do what the Bible calls good works. John 15, let me come to a close. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches, verse 5. If you stay joined to me and I stay joined to you, then you will produce, somebody say, lots of fruit. How many of you know God wants you to live a fruit-filled life? 
I've got to be willing to die to myself to allow the plan and the purpose of God to be birthed in me because God's plan is so much better than mine. He knows what he has planned for me according to Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Let me come to a close. Two portions of the will of God that I think are important. Two portions. If you're taking notes, write these down. Number one, the revealed will of God. Because Romans chapter 12 says that, verse 2 says that, listen, if, if, if you are renewed in your mind, come on, then you will prove what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Right? There is the revealed will of God that God says, this is what I want you to do. This is what I need you to do. This is what my plan is for you. He says that you will prove the will of God if your mind is renewed and you're not conformed to the world. The revealed will of God is critically important um, because it, 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 the thing is that we have to just learn how to do what we know. That, that we have to learn how to do what has been revealed to us. That revealed will of God is given to us in the Word of God. I remember, I remember a, a wise man told me, I was like, oh, I want God, I want your will for my life. I just want to know, Jesus, what you want me to do? <laughs> he said, what do you, what, what, what's the big deal? I said, I just want to do God's will. Simple wisdom. You know what he said? You know who it was. Do what you know. So often we're looking for the, the, this lightning in the sky and this voice down from heaven, but there has been a revealed will of God that is revealed to us in the Word. Do the Word and you will be doing the will of God. Oh, man, I know I just messed up somebody's theology. You know it was my dad, Perry, right? He just do what you know. If you do what you know, come on, and you're faithful to what you know, then God, watch this, then God can reveal to you the discovered will of God. He says, if you want to prove, watch this, the will of God, he says, do what you know. Get your mind renewed. Come on, get in that word. Begin to grow in your faith. And as you now do what you know and you're faithful doing what you know, God says, then I can surprise you with some stuff you didn't know. Yeah. It's funny, training as a psychologist, uh, what I'm learning, what I'm learning is that you don't direct people. Because when you direct people, come on, then they think that you are their God. But what you got to do is let people discover, come on, for themselves. And when they arrive at discovery, then they will own it because it is a part of them and it has come out of them. And the reality is, is that we're busy directing people. Come on, but then that makes us the God. But if we allow people to discover what God has called them to be for themselves, come on, then nobody can take that from you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And so, and so uh, the discovered will of God, watch this, is in your DNA. Can I close with this? The discovered will of God is in your spiritual DNA. Let me go to Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For by the grace and merit of favor of God given to me, I warn everyone not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Look at somebody and tell him he's talking to you. He's talking to you. <laughs> Not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance. Don't be proud. But rate his ability with what? Sober judgment. Each according to the degree of faith apportioned to him by who? By God. Go to verse 4. For as in one physical body we have many parts, and all of these parts do not have the same function or use. Verse, go on. So we must, so we, numerous as we are, are what? How many bodies? One body in Christ the Messiah, and individually we are parts of one another, mutually dependent on one another. Do you know that God has created you with a spiritual DNA and that DNA has predetermined the gifts that are going to be placed on the inside of you? I got a friend right now. I got a friend right now. Um, I'll be going to visit him in June. He's taking over probably one of the uh, quickest growing churches in America. His name is John Gray. How many of y'all remember John? He used to come here. He used to make us all laugh. We thought he was a great comedian. But who knew Behind his comedic face 
was a depth of a word that would speak to the nations. My, my God, what am I saying? I'm saying that comedy was cool. He was doing it for God, but he had a bigger call on his life, but he was faithful with his comedy. Wherever he went, he made people laugh, but then he'll have you laughing, and the next thing you know, he'll have you crying because he'll drop a word on you. In other words, we saw behind the veil, and we brought him up here to do comedy, and me and my dad said, we need to bring him back to preach. There was a gift behind the veil, and I'm telling you today that there are gifts behind the veil of your life. There is more to you than meets the eye. You just haven't tapped into it yet, but he said there is a discovered will of God that comes to us, and fruit just begins to pop off of our life when we begin to do it God's way. It, listen, it's a natural progression. The problem is we, we lose, we lose in the process of stagnation, frustration, procrastination, and distraction. We lose in the process, and then we disconnect ourselves to the vine, and we start to blame people. And, and our Pastor Carl and I were having lunch yesterday from the North Campus, and as we were having this discussion, I was sharing with him the word, and he said, you know, it's interesting because many people who suffer from stagnation end up falling back into the prior stage. If you're not careful, if you're not careful as a, as a Christian, as a child of God, you need to understand that if stagnation gets in your way, you need to call it for what it is, and then you need to break that spirit in the name of Jesus. Because if you're not careful, you can fall from stage five to stage four. Stage four to stage three. Stage three to stage two. And then before you know it, you're back in new members' classes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. My time is up. Let me say this. We are, we are all still being sanctified. How many of you would say that? I'm being cleaned up every day. God is fixing me up every day. We're, we're all still trying to prove the will of God. In our daily walk, fulfilling God's purpose on our life. At 52, y'all know I'm still in school. I'm saying, God, there must be more for me, so, so I'm just following your lead. We're still trying to produce fruit that remains. Because only really what we do for Christ is going to last. What kind of legacy will you leave? Will it be a legacy that they remember you for worldly things or will they remember you for kingdom things? What lives have you impacted? Because the reality is if you're connected to the vine, it's never about us. It's always about what we can do for Christ. How are you impacting your world? You know, when you are in the vine and on the vine and connected to the vine, you do know that you've graduated from people's opinions. <laughs> if you're still driven by what people think of you, you may be in stage two. As I was thinking about this the other day, I realized, and I said to the North Capers, I think y'all, I said to them, y'all still think I could be a pastor if, 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 you know what I'm talking about, Pastor George, the way people talk about us. You think I could still carry this weight if I was worried about what people thought about me? As opposed to doing that, why don't you just choose to love people in spite of themselves and sooner or later, love covers a multitude of sins. Watch this. And sooner or later, they say, you know, he's not such a bad guy after all. You're so busy trying to fight your battles. Stop trying to fight your battles and let God do the work. He says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and God will take care of your battles and people who you once fought with, you will be friends with. You got to learn how to graduate from opinions of people because opinions of people can keep you from God's will and God's plan for your life. When you are connected to the vine, you function in purpose. You do what you're created to do. And when you do that, man, I'm telling you, nobody can get you off of the beat. But when you're fulfilling God's destiny, it doesn't matter who comes and who goes, you choose to stay on the wall because I'm not doing it for people, I'm doing it for God. God said, you're going to produce much fruit if you stay connected to the vine. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what am I producing? If it's not fruit that looks like the fruit that God wants from me, Maybe I'm not connected. 
or maybe I'm connected and blocking the blessing of God in my life. You do know that sometimes our own mouth can block our blessing. And so I encourage you to stay connected to the vine. We're not done in John 15. I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but we're not done in John 15 because there's a lot we didn't get to. Would you stand to your feet? Somebody holler, stay connected. Let me. So. Would you take a moment, bow your head and close your eyes just for a second. If you're in the building today and you say, I don't know Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to be connected to the vine. I want this life that connects me to God. I want to choose the Lord. You may think this is a message for more people who are maturing in Christ, but it's really for anybody who doesn't know him. If you're in the building today, I'm just going to ask you to lift your hand in the air and say, I want to be saved today. I want to be saved. I want Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to come to Christ. Come on, get that hand up good and high. Today, I want to, I want to be saved. I see that hand, brother. Is there someone else today? You say, today, today, I want to be saved. Secondarily, you say, I, I, I was serving the Lord, but I, I turned and walked away, and I, I need to turn around and come back home. I need to come out of the cold. I need to reconnect with God. I've let my life get separated. Thirdly, you may be here, and you don't have a church home. You're saying, man, I, I feel like God's calling me to be a part of this church. We'd love to have you in Greater Shiloh. If you fit into any one of those categories, I'm going to ask you to step into the nearest aisle. You need to be saved. Come, let me shake your hand and welcome you to the family of God. You need a church home. We'd love to have you here. You're a backslider and you need to come back to Jesus Christ. This is an opportunity for you to come. Is there one? Is there one? Choose the Lord. In the back, in the back. Amen. In the back. Choose the Lord. Is there one? Come on, sis. God bless you. Come on, bring your baby too. Is that Jessica? God bless you. Welcome home, Jess. Welcome home, Jess. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home, my brother. God bless you. You all right, sir? Yes, sir. Bless you. Welcome home, Jess. We've missed you. God bless your heart, your beautiful baby girl. Is there someone else today? You say, today I'm choosing the way of the Lord. Today I'm choosing the way of the Lord. Off to my right, I'm just going to ask you to go with these wonderful people. Shiloh, can we celebrate them as they go? Come on, God bless you. We love you, Jess. Welcome home. Listen, I want to be, I want to be intentional about this. If you are suffering, struggling, stagnation, procrastination, distraction, or any of those, I want you to come. I just want to have a word of prayer with you. Come on, bro. Is there someone else today? Come on. I know there's more God has for me. I'm distracted. I'm frustrated. I'm procrastinating. You never know who God has connected you to. You never know who your ministry is supposed to touch. You never know. Maybe someone's life is hanging in the balance because you haven't made a decision yet. Just take a moment, bow your head, close your eyes. Don't focus on me. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. God has given you all gifts that are to be used in the church and in the world. Your gift is to make a difference. Your gift is to impact lives. God ne never gives anything to you that he doesn't want to do through you. I don't know what your gift is. Some of you I can discern, but I know that God it's ministering to you. The idea, the stagnation can make us feel frustrated. And then that frustration can control our decisions. God is always trying to push us to the next. He's always trying to grow new fruit from us. Maybe you've been hurt in the church. Maybe somebody has done something to you. Maybe you're involved in a ministry and, and it didn't go the way you wanted it to go. You're mad and you're frustrated, but you're saying, 
I'm just not going to do that again. Well, maybe God has something else for you to do. But whatever it is, do it to the glory of God. Let me pray for you now. Elder Hattie, are you in the building somewhere? She teaching class? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for these, that people. You know what their needs are, Lord Jesus. You know whether it's procrastination or frustration, God. You know, God, what is holding them. And so now, God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would release the gift of God off of them, that they would begin to do what you called them to do. Whatever it is, God, whether, whatever it is, God, we pray, we have need of them. You have need of them. You didn't give us our gifts so we could sit on them. You gave us to them to us so we could use them to the glory of God. Now, God, I pray for every person here. I break the spirit of stagnation the spirit of frustration the spirit of distraction I come against it in the name of Jesus let us graduate from the opinions of people and walk in purpose and destiny in the name of Jesus I come into agreement with my brothers and with my sisters that they would move from this place and begin to do what you've called them to do we come into agreement we speak it as done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give God praise. Now, here's what I need you to do. Here's what I need you to do today. Today. I need you to take a step of faith. If it's not written down, go home and write it down. Whether it's snapping pictures, or whether it's going into the prison and sharing your testimony or serving in a capacity of ministry. Do it today. Operate under the urgency of right now. And as you do that, put it someplace you can see it every day. If there's somebody you need to call, call them today and say, listen, I'm going to be there next Sunday or I'm coming Wednesday or whatever it is you're going to do. But do it now. Don't put it off because moments like this are great. But if you let them pass you by, it'll be another year before you start the process again. Will you turn somebody and just tell them, do it now. Do it today. Come on, look at somebody right on this altar. Do it today. Do it today. Do it today. And as you do it today, we'll watch God work in your life. Amen. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together for these God's people. You may return back to your seats. There's some free fruit up here if y'all want it after service. Would you join the hand of your neighbor? Let's get ready to go home. Lord, you showed yourself strong in the Somebody say, connected to the vine. Come on, say it with me. Stay connected to the vine. God said when you do that, man, you can pray. Just... The word was amazing, and we hope that it impacted your life in some way. If you'd like to give your life to Christ, we'd like to extend the opportunity for you to do so. You can call the church office, or you can use the prayer tab. When you view us again online next week, make sure you invite someone to come join with you. We look forward to seeing you. Remember to always give, love, serve.